basically set up by the British. They had many, many race horses scattered across the country. I guess it was entertainment and diversion for their troops. Uh, brought a little bit of home to where they were. I am basically what you would, what people call as a horse whisperer, but it's a very, uh, it's a very widely used term. I basically break in young horses using um, natural horsemanship method and the, a kind way. So I basically train young horses, that's what I do. क्या हो गई सर वंस द फोल अराइव्स द मदर एंड फोल आर टुगेदर अप टिल फोर टू सिक्स मंथ्स वंस दे आर वींड दे आर यूजुअली केप्ट टुगेदर इन पैडक्स ऑफ कोल्स एंड फील्स सेपरेट एंड They spend their time in the paddocks, just growing up as like youngsters, playing and fooling around and having a good time. So once it turns two year old, that's when the hustle bustle of selling happens. That's the business end of the breeding industry. to ride in the riding school, I started which was 10 years. I haven't stopped since. It's something that I, you cannot explain it. That when you are in the presence of a horse, you feel privileged. If you can take care of a horse, you feel the privilege, you feel
feel like God gave you this special privilege that you can take care of. First time I recognized or realized the fact that being a woman in India in the racing industry is, is still an upward task was when I applied for my jockey's license. The fact that it did not happen, one of the big reasons it did not happen is because I'm a woman. I was a wife and a mother and that became a very big issue. So I wonder if I was single they didn't they would say that yeah you can carry on. But because I'm a wife and a mother and that it's a dangerous game, that's what became a bit of an issue. When I look back upon it, I still believe that what was done was not right. Um, why did I not um, push for it and fight for it is something that um, only I understand and that's put to rest. I've had a horse fall on top of me and broken my shoulder. I've had um, a really bad fall where a horse got loose on the racetrack and came and rammed into my horse so I I broke my jaw, I broke my hand and I broke a shoulder. That was a very bad one where I passed out and had no memory after that. My son was really disturbed about it and he was very young at that point of time. And he was scared that his mom's gonna die. So he said to me, Mom, I don't want you to do this anymore. So I was very sad. I, was, I, I felt really bad for him because he was really scared. So I told him, I said, you know what, it's okay. If you don't want me to, I won't. But your mom will not be the same mom. So he was like, okay, but you promise you'll be careful. So I was like, okay. <laughs> as careful as I can be. <laughs> It was something that I was meant to do. I really do believe that I was meant, born to do this. The tradition survives, but in a very condensed form because many of the smaller race courses that they started have sadly shut down. There are only about eight race, active race courses in India today. I think when the Brits were here, they were probably at least 50. Uh, there used to be a race course practically in every cantonment. Like even today, if you went to uh, various parts in India, you would find a race course road. You would find a race course which existed on paper and today you have concrete buildings coming up in that area. So, gradually I think uh, the interest has fallen and people uh, are now trying to see if that can be restored. But it will improve, I think, in the next maybe three, four decades. There has to be a radical transformation. Otherwise, it's going to be a dying spot. <laughs>